A rational expression is one polynomial divided by another polynomial. For example, take a look at this one. 2x squared plus 3x, that's a polynomial. 5x is also a polynomial. And so th since we have one polynomial divided by another, that's a rational expression. These can look quite complicated, but sometimes it's possible to simplify them a great deal. And when you're simplifying rational expressions, an important thing to keep in mind is that it's a lot like working with fractions. In fact, the ideas you use to simplify rational expressions are pretty much exactly the same as the ideas you use to simplify fractions. So here, I want to simplify this thing that kind of looks like a fraction. How do I simplify fractions? For example, let's say I have 22 over 33. And I want to simplify that. What does that mean? Well, it means reducing it to lower terms. So the way we approach that generally is to factor the numerator and denominator so that we can see if there are any factors which we can cancel. The numerator, 22, can be written as 2 times 11. And the denominator can be written as 3 times 11. And these are prime factors, right? 2, 3, and 11 are all prime numbers, which means we won't be able to factor any more. And now we can see that it's going to be possible to cancel these 11s. And 2 over 33, or 22 over 33, reduces to just 2 over 3. So that's the same idea we're going to use to reduce this rational expression. The first thing we want to do is factor it. So the numerator, 2x squared plus 3x, I can factor a GCF out of that. Both terms are multiples of x. If I factor out an x, it leaves 2x plus 3 behind. Now, the denominator is basically already factored for us, 5 times x. Now in this way of writing it, we can see the factor of x in the numerator will cancel with the factor of x in the denominator, reducing this to 2x plus 3 over 5. That's a simplified expression that represents almost the same thing. Now, take a look. There's a slight difference between these two. Um, you cannot plug x equal to 0 into the rational expression we started with. Because if you did, your denominator would be 5 times 0, which is 0, and you're never allowed to divide by 0. So technically, you're not able to plug the same, the, the x value 0 into the first rational expression we started with. But there's no reason you couldn't plug it into the one we ended with. So in order to be careful about that, in order to make sure that we don't simplify and then end up thinking we're allowed to do something we're not, we should make note of the fact that we simplified something where we were not allowed to plug in zero. So that we should make we should write that down as a restriction on what we're allowed to plug in even after we simplify. Let's look at another example. So I want to simplify 2x plus 4 over 10x plus 20. Let's factor again. The numerator has a common factor of 2 we can pull out. The denominator has a common factor of 10 we can pull out. So right away we see the factor of x plus 2 cancels between numerator and denominator, leaving us with two tenths. Actually, that's not completely factored, uh, reduced either, because 10 can be factored. 10 is the same as 2 times 5. So you could really cancel those 2's as well. Now be careful. I canceled the last factor that's written in the numerator. But even though it's not written, there's a hidden 1 there. So after I finish canceling those twos, what I'm really left with is one-fifth. 
And if you wanted to make sure that you were writing down your restrictions, well, notice that in the original expression, we were not able to plug in a negative 2 because that would have made this factor 0. So x cannot be negative 2. I'm going to skip writing down the restrictions for the remainder of these examples so that we can focus on the simplifying aspect of it. Here we're going to simplify a product of two rational expressions. Now remember, this is a lot like simplifying fractions. So for example, if I have 2 sevenths multiplied by 21 eighths, and I want to simplify that, a good way to do it is factor everything first before you start multiplying because while the numbers are still small it's easier to see how to factor them. If I do the multiplication first the numbers will get bigger and it will be harder to see how to factor them. So how can we factor? Well 2 and 7 are both already prime numbers so I'll just leave those as they are. Now 21 that's 3 times 7 and 8, that's 2 times 2 times 2. Now when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So the numerator is 2 times 3 times 7. And the denominator is 7 times 2 times 2 times 2. And we can see that there's some more canceling. I can cancel this 2 with one of the 2's in the denominator. And I can cancel the 7 with the 7 in the denominator. That leaves 3 over 2 times 2, which you would probably write as 3 over 4. Okay? So remember, that was just a little example, a reminder of how we simplify when we're working with fractions. We're going to employ the same ideas here to work with rational expressions. One more thing I want to point out is we really could have done the canceling immediately after we did the factoring. We didn't really have to write it as a single fraction first. Because I've got these things multiplied together, I really could have canceled the sevens and the twos up there. That'll save us a little bit of writing. Let's use these ideas to see if we can simplify this product of rational expressions. 2 times x plus 4. I can factor a GCF out of that. x plus 1 is already in lowest terms. Multiply this by 2 times x plus 2. Well, I can factor a 2 out of that numerator. And x minus 1 is already in lowest terms. And is there anything we can cancel? Sure. This x plus 1 can be canceled with this x plus 1. So that leaves me 2 times 2 times x plus 2 in the numerator over x minus 1 in the denominator. And depending on what you're planning to do with it, you could leave it in that form or you could try to reduce the number of parentheses you have to write. 2 times 2 is 4, and if I distribute that 4 into the x plus 2 in the numerator, I get 4x plus 8. And in the denominator, I can just write x minus 1. How about division? Well, when we divide fractions, for example, 3 fifths divided by uh, 9 halves, we think of division as multiplication by a reciprocal. So instead of writing divided by 9 halves, we can instead think of it as multiplication by 2 ninths. And then it's just like simplifying a product, because it is a product. So we factor what we can, cancel what we can, and we'd be left with 2 over 5 times 3, or 2 fifteenths. So remember that as an example of the ideas we'll use for factoring a division of rational expressions. Uh, for simplifying a division of rational expressions. So start by factoring. I have a 2 I can pull out of 2x plus 6, leaving x plus 3 behind. 
and I have x uh, 3 times x plus 9, I can factor out a 3. Now I can change my division into multiplication by a reciprocal. So the reciprocal, that's what you get when you flip the fraction. So this x plus 1, or x minus 1, ends up in the numerator. 3x plus 3 ends up in the denominator. And now I can see I have an x plus 3 factor in the numerator that will cancel with the same factor in the denominator. And nothing else cancels, so let's simplify by getting rid of unnecessary parentheses and distributing. 2 times x minus 1 is 2x minus 2. 3 times x plus 1 is 3x plus 3. Also, I factored before I changed the division into multiplication by a reciprocal, but it would have been fine to do it in the other order. Either way is acceptable, and we'll get you to the same final answer. Last one. Uh, we've reviewed how to work with multiplication and division. We have to finish up with addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction work the same way, so let's just do an example with addition. And let's remind ourselves how we simplify when we're working with a sum of fractions. So if I have 1 fourth plus 2 thirds, the way to combine those is to think of them as fractions with the same denominator. How can I come up with a way of writing these as fractions with the same denominator? Well, the least common denominator would be 12, right? Because the least common multiple of 4 and 3 is 12. I can write the first fraction as something over 12, and I can write the second fraction as something over 12. And the easiest way to do that, is, to make sure you don't make a mistake, is figure out, well, what do I need to multiply the denominator by? So for example, to change this 4 into a 12, I'd need to multiply it by 3. In order to not change the fr value of the fraction, but just the way we're writing it, we want to multiply the numerator and denominator by that 3. So if I have 1 fourth, I'm going to multiply it by 3 over 3. Because 3 over 3 is just 1. And if I multiply something by 1, I'm not changing its value. But this is going to allow me to change the way I write it even though I'm not changing the value. So, uh, how about this? 2 thirds, I want to write that as something over 12. To make the denominator into a 12, I would need to multiply it by 4. So I'm going to multiply 2 thirds by 4 over 4. Now let's see what happens if we combine these multiplications. Now I don't want to do any canceling. That, that would be going backwards from where we are right now because I'm trying to get the same denominator. Let's just multiply the fractions across. 3 times 1 is 3 over 3 times 4, which is 12. 2 times 4 is 8 over 3 times 4, which is 12. Now, because the fractions have the same denominator, it's like I'm measuring things in the same units, 3 twelfths and 8 twelfths. And I can just add those together and get 11 twelfths. Okay. So let's use the same idea to simplify the sum of rational expressions, x over x plus 1 plus 3 over x. I want to get a common denominator. Well, the least common multiple of these two denominators, x plus 1 and x, the least common multiple will be their product, x times x plus 1. So in order to write the first fraction, x over x plus 1, with a denominator of x times x plus 1, I have to multiply this fraction by x over x. The second fraction, to get the right denominator, I need to multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now, 
multiply the fractions we see to get multiply them together by multiplying across x times x is x squared the denominator is x times x plus 1 and then on the right half 3 times x plus 1 is 3x plus 3 over x times x plus 1 now I can combine the two fractions because they have the same denominator by just adding the numerators. x squared plus 3x plus 3 over x times x plus 1. At this point, you might see if there's any more simplification you can do. If, if you can factor the numerator, you might be able to cancel with something in the denominator. But if not, then you can just leave it in this form. or you could expand the denominator and rewrite it as x squared plus x. Both of those would be correct.